2511T was under the rear wheel. There's no chain brake handle. The top handle is no longer there. Throttle is all, well, throttle's still there. There's a bunch of curled up, ugly looking stuff over here. Maybe not too much is wrong with this. I'm not gonna look into it right now because I got a feeling I'm gonna have to order some parts. But Bellhopper, if you're watching this, no disrespect to you, buddy. Uh, I love you, brother, because you, you are a good hearted man. Um, I wanna try this myself. Is that okay? Can I do that? I mean, I just like to try. If I fail, I fail. But it was, this would be kind of cool to uh, rebuild this thing. Uh, I just want to let you know I've got a future video coming here. I am going to tackle this uh, CS2511T. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild it myself. I've been talking with my good friend Michael Snow over in uh, the neighboring state of Pennsylvania, and we're going to get this thing running. Well, hello, friends. It's Wayne Polson coming to you from the basement of Hartwood, right next door to SM Heartland, and Michael Snow, John Gray. John Gray, you were with me when this happened, and Michael Snow, I told you all about it, and you've been uh, encouraging me rather politely to get this project done, so today it's finally going to happen. As those of you who follow the channel know, when was it, last fall, John, something like that, I was, uh, we were doing, John and I were doing a job over at my neighbor's, and John was managing the saws. Right, John? This saw happened to be parked right behind my tractor tire. <laughs> Not really. I was backing up, and it wasn't John's fault. I was backing up and wasn't looking behind me, and I ran my saw over. This is the CS2511T uh, top handle saw that I promised you all that I would repair one day, and today is that day. So um, anyway, I ended up damaging pretty badly. I mean, at least it didn't get into the the actual engine itself. Uh, the engine and carburetor are fine, but a lot of the plastics and different control mechanisms and things like that were messed up pretty bad. So I ordered parts. Those parts came in. I ordered the parts actually about a week or so ago. And what I got in, what I had to order was, um, I got a new air filter. It needed that anyway. I got the air filter cover. This is a brand new air filter cover. The old one cracked, as you can see here. And I got a brake lever, which is, where is it at? Right here. Brake lever. I'm going to have to transfer parts from the old brake lever to this one. That's fine. They're all still in good condition. Uh, throttle control and the throttle lockout. So here's the throttle control. Throttle lockout. And the spring is from the old installation. So I'm transferring that over. Uh, this throttle trigger was was cracked as you can see right there and the lockout was was bent so bad I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to straighten it out and reuse it without breaking it so I ordered those new the rear handle this thing was totally crushed um, the rear handle is where the carburetor actually mounts it has the primer bulb on it this is where the trigger and lockout will mount as well the old one it's just pieces. Here's part of it. Here's part of it. Here's part of it. So, not good. Uh, and then a collar. This little collar here. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but uh, this thing is, is sort of crushed and bent. Uh, can you see that? And I didn't think I was going to be able to straighten it out enough to be able to use it, so I ordered a new one right here. And where that goes is on this intake tube here that the carburetor feeds into the cylinder. This just goes right in there like that, but I don't want to install that just yet. Um, what that will do is it serves to keep this rigid, and you'll see what I mean here in a little bit. And finally, a compression spring. I've already, uh, this is the, uh, the new spring. I've already installed that here, but this spring is a part of the vibration isolation along with this one here for the rear handle assembly. Okay, so um, it's important to note that with this installation, the carburetor and everything is kind of allowed to, to wiggle around a little bit, which is good. And that's why this 
intake tube here is, is flexible to a point, to a degree. And what happened when I ran it over, I'm sure I flexed that handle so much that it bent that little piece that goes inside here. And that's how that got destroyed. So, uh, and actually this whole uh, tubing piece is supposed to mount into the rear handle. It was actually pulled through. Uh, so we're gonna, get, we're gonna get that fixed. But anyway, those are all the parts. Uh, I have to transfer some pieces and parts from the old broken rear handle assembly, like these latches and this uh, lanyard attachment here. That's gonna get transferred over. I think that's about it. That's everything. I'm also going to be replacing the muffler with a straight pipe. I'll break that out later. I think that's about it. All right, let's get at it. Okay, so the first order is to uh, go ahead and get these wires and fuel lines kind of uh, secured in their proper positions. I'm going to use some uh, hot glue. It, that wasn't factory, but here's the power switch or the stop switch. And um, it, it's routed through this channel here and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a dab of some glue just in key places here so I don't have to mess with this or worry about it coming out that's good there put a little dab here and the few lines I'm not gonna do that to ah, maybe I will just put a little dab right there push this one down to it. Just to help me keep things in place when I'm putting these covers back on. All right, so now, um, if you notice, there are two fuel lines here. Uh, what this connects to is the primer bulb. And what I did here, since there are two of them, I left, and there's a coupling on each side of, of this, uh, of these, or on the ends of these pipes here are these tubes. I kept the black one with this one here so that I would know it would go to this empty tube and then I kept the white one with this tube here so that um, I would know which tube was which when I reassembled it. So that's just one way of keeping track of it. You could mark it with a marker or something like that. So that's one thing I'm gonna have to do, but before I get that far along, we're gonna pull this piece of tubing off right here. I've already got this loosened up to a degree. And by the way, I ordered these parts from Parts Tree. I ended up paying about $115 or so for the whole thing, uh, for everything. So it's not too bad. Uh, brand new parts. All right, the. I've got that off. This has to get installed now. This is why you keep that uh, uh, that collar out of there because you have to install it uh, through the bottom of the rear handle, just like that. Okay, and now once that's in, you could put that piece in place. Just like that. It's in there now, okay? Then what I wanna do is get these hoses connected. So let's do that. And I'm gonna recruit the help of some hemostats. And let's get these going. I'm gonna hook the black one up to the black. white one here up to the white okay that's in place now while I've got that done I'm gonna go ahead and try to install this now this little cover it's just plastic um, and it just covers this area here there's a tab or a, a pin here that goes through a rubber grommet or uh, I guess it's sort of a plastic uh, grommet and there's a tab here, there's a tab here, a tab here, and a tab up front. So these all need to go in place and lock in. So it makes sense to put this long pin in first. Everything 
else last. Okay, that's in place. I have access to the oiler screw here, so that's all good. And it looks like my tubing came undone, the white one, so I'm gonna have to pull that out now from inside here with my hemostats. And try to reconnect this. There we go. Okay, now let's hope that everything stays in place. Now, one of the things I want to do is take this suspension spring out and attach it. I should have done this earlier. I want to attach it to the handle before I put that back in there. So this spring will go into the handle here. There we go. And then there's also a suspension spring on this side. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. Okay, and that will go through here eventually. And then this one, I need to take this right hand side of the handle off. This will actually go in up there. All right, so now. With all that going, there is another thing to consider. That's this rubber piece right here. I'm not exactly sure what that does. It looks like it's probably the air intake. Um, so there is a slot that that has to go in. And let's see here, if I put this in place there so that that spring is where it needs to be, right in this little channel here. And now I have access, it's hard to see I know, but this thing has to be seated What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out of here. This is the piece I'm talking about right here. And if you watch it, if you look at it, you see that it's shaped with a round on this side and a square on this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the bottom. Uh, I'm going to put it, attach it to the engine block first. That side is just perfectly rectangular here. And it goes into a, a little channel in here. I should have done this before. I got this far. You know what? Maybe I can still do it. I may end up having to reconnect my hose again, but I'm going to try not to. All right, so here it is. It goes right in here. It doesn't actually attach to the engine block. It attaches to the plastic housing that the engine block is attached to. All right, so that's in place. There's just a little channel in there that that has to, uh, has to go in. So that's in place. And as you can see, my hose has come disconnected again. This is gonna be an interesting thing. I hope this doesn't come undone when I'm using the saw. It shouldn't because it's pushed in when everything is assembled, so I think we'll be okay. All right, let's get this down where it belongs. 
right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this little rubber grommet up up through there. Just like that. Now that's in place. We'll check it down here, make sure it didn't come out. Looks good, okay. Hoses are connected. Everything's in place now. So all I need to do, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw in here that holds the suspension spring in place. side. <clears throat> I'm also going to go ahead and put this side in. And I need to make sure that spring is aligned right there. All right, so that's good. Now, this rubber tubing here needs to be secured back to uh, the intake manifold. So we're gonna put that in next. It's right down through these holes here. Snugging up. Okay, that looks good. All right, everything's feeling pretty good so far. That's really nice. Now, I think it's time. Oh, there's also a plug that needs to be transferred from the old rear handle. And it goes right into this hole here. I don't know exactly what that plug is for. I just know it's there. All right, so that's plugged. Now before we get too much further along, I'm gonna go ahead and install the, uh, uh, the switch here. Now this switch also has to be routed through some channels. You'll be able to see this better if you're doing it yourself, but there, just, just take a look. You'll see channels where these wires have to run. And then up here, it just goes into a little channel there. All right. 
right, that looks good. Nothing's interfering. I'm gonna put a little drop of hot glue right there. That way that won't slip out of there. All right, so the way the lockout and trigger go in, the lockout sits up here like that. The spring goes into a little hole right there in that lockout and slips over that pin right there and then over that. So now you've got this. All right, but then the trigger goes over this pin and there's a little channel right here where the spring has to go. So that, we we'll wanna make sure that spring is moved over. So I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to bring the string along, or the spring along. And now you can see the trigger stops right there. If I push the, if I push the uh, lockout, it allows the trigger to go all the way in. Okay, so everything's in place there. So at this point, I think it's safe to say we can put the other handle half on. And actually this has to go into the tail first. There's a little tab right here by my pinky that goes underneath there somehow. Make sure that switch works, and it does. Make sure that throttle works, and it does. Okay, so I think. I don't know why that's. Oh, because there's a spring down, because the spring is separating these pieces. So it's going to be a little springy until we get the whole thing assembled. Now, um. take a little break. All right, I had to take a time out there because it seemed to me there was something missing here and I didn't want to waste the time on, uh, on the video trying to figure that out. But what I forgot to do here is I forgot to put the throttle linkage in when I installed the, uh, the trigger here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out again. I'm going to put the throttle linkage in like that. Slide up through the back slot back here in the handle and then reinstall this. Just like that. So now we're back to where we were. So I can go ahead and put this handle on. that. Make sure that's still working, and it is. All right, so at this point, if I want to keep that somewhat together, I can go ahead and install this side handle here. All right, so this handle, the bottom part of this handle, has to go on first, and you put it on and you sort of twist it into place like that. And then we can put this in place and reattach this screw just to hold things together. Not super tight yet, but we'll just leave it like that. Then here, uh, we have to put a screw in. Let me see, is this the right one? Yeah, I think this is the right one. It actually came with a screw. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I think it looks like it's all the same. So let me go ahead and put this one in. And this has to pick up the other end of that spring. And 
And the other end of that spring, you can see it's compressed there underneath the screw, so we're good. And I don't think this actually got started, so let's get this one going again. All right, so that's in place. All right, we're getting closer, folks. We're getting closer. I have access to the spark plug. This moves around freely. That's good. I could put the plug in now, but I'm not going to. Carburetor's ready for installation. Okay, the part that I'm having trouble with is the chain brake has to go here and onto this little post right here. And I don't know how to do that without breaking it. Just like that, there we go. So I started it on this post first and then brought it over here. Okay, so now it's in place here and it's in place here. This side takes this little shoulder screw here, this one right here, I'm gonna put that in place. It should be spring, whoops, <laughs> should be spring loaded once we get this screw in. Okay, that part's working okay. Good. All right, now we can put this cover on. like my long bit here. I know it's overkill. But it comes in handy for other reasons, so I just leave it on here. All right. Cool. Everything's working so far. My hoses are still attached under here. That's awesome. I think we're about ready. Oh, we've got some more parts to transfer over here. Oh, I hope I can do this with this. Let's try this. We have to put this orange clamp on. And that goes just like this. There we go. That, oh, that doesn't look right. because it's not right. Okay, so then this piece has a high and a low bar. The low bar goes in here on this side. bar goes in here all right I think that's how that goes okay so we're good now there all right now another piece I need to transfer over is the lanyard holder here So that's going to go in like this. There we go. All right, so all that is in place. Okay, I think I'm ready now. We can go ahead and put this carburetor in. So here's the carburetor. I did clean this thing. I put it in the... Uh, uh, ultrasound cleaner. All right, so uh, let's see. So here is our idle set. That will go this direction. This uh, tube gets connected into 
the one that you see right down there. So let's hook up the throttle linkage first. You've got to hook this primer tube up. I don't know if this is the primer. This might actually be, yeah, this is the primer tube. All right, so with that in, I'm gonna line up my tubing down there, put this in place. All right, looks good. Let's get the screws in for that. Now, this piece got damaged, but I was able to straighten it out. They call this the elbow. Don't ask me why they call it an elbow, but let me, uh, get a rag on this and clean this off a little bit. All right. They call it an elbow. Uh, which way does it go? This way? I guess it doesn't matter. It's symmetrical, so... Just gonna try this by hand once just to see. Yeah, we can get some more torque on it. All right, that's good. That's in place. Throttle's working fine. And it looks like also we have to be careful. This little piece of hose from the primer bulb needs to go around a pin back here to keep it from interfering. Yeah, that's to keep it from interfering with the throttle. Okay, we're good there. So that, that hose, I don't know if you can see it in there or not, but it had to go behind that pin. I just want to make sure we're still connected. Okay, we're good there. All right. What's next? We can actually put the filter on. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. That looks good. Filter cover. This latch is in place like that. And we are golden, folks. We are golden. Spark plug, let's go ahead and put that in, shall we? This is not a new plug, but we're gonna go ahead and get it in there anyway. All right, that's all intact. It's looking pretty good, folks. Looking good. All right, we're gonna go to this side now. And first thing I'm gonna put in is this little shield. Uh, let's see, how does this go in again? like that. It 
chain catcher. And this piece. good let's take a break I got to get the muffler all right friends I had to duck out and run up to the garage and get this pipe uh, here is the pipe right here and it uh, comes with uh, two screws because the original screws won't uh, work anymore from what I'm told uh, so I'm not exactly sure why but those will not work so recommended that we put Loctite on these. This is high strength thread locker, so I'm gonna use this. Just gonna put a little dab of that right there. A little dab of that right there. Let's put this pipe on. If I'm supposed to put any kind of a gasket of any type on there or not, but um, I don't think so. I mean, there is this. Maybe I do need to put this guy on. All right, that's the pipe in place. Now we can go ahead and install this cover. comes out right there. It looks pretty cool so far. All right, now let's see what we can do with this cover. That looks good, okay. At this point, I'll go ahead and install the bar. And where's my chain? Here it is. making sure that the brake lever is in that little area there.
Very good. I think it's back together. Let's start it up. Let's see what happens. All right, folks, let's see what happens. I'm going to prime it up. Looks good. Bring up the choke. Power on. That's a good sign. Initial settings I had the low jet set to about one and a half turns out or open. I had the high jet closed and I set the idle pretty high so that uh, it would uh, take having the throttle open a little bit more. And once it did fire, I turned the low jet uh, counterclockwise to see if the engine would, RPMs would go down. And if they didn't, I'd go the other way to see if they'd go up. And eventually they went up. I went past that peak RPM point, and it started to drop off again. So I came right back up about midway between peak and where it started to fall off. And then I opened up the high jet a couple of turns, I think, here. I don't know. I didn't really count them. But I just opened it up and up. Good trigger response. What do you think? What do you think there, Michael Snow? John Gray, we're back on the air. We're back on the air. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was kind of fun doing this. I didn't expect it to work the first time out the shoot. I had to stop the camera quite a few times just to try to figure out what the next steps were going to be because uh, I've never put this kind of a saw back together again as I did today. That was uh, quite a challenge for me. So there was a lot of uh, trial and error going on there. I was determined to get this saw back online uh, because I love this saw. This is the CS2511T by Echo. It's great in the canopy. It's a lightweight saw. And now with this straight pipe edition here, which is 
pretty hot right now. It's giving it a little bit more horsepower. They say about maybe 28% improvement in horsepower. So, uh, and it, it, it seems like that. My chain's a little dull, so I could stand to put an edge on those cutters. I'll get that done. Can't wait to get this up in the tree again. Michael Snow, thanks for turning me onto the pipe. John Gray, thanks for purchasing this opportunity for me. I don't mean purchasing it financially. I mean, just by helping me that day. <laughs> I'm gonna make you feel guilty for this yet, aren't I? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I, you're not. You're not at fault, honestly. This was. This was a fun thing to do. Anyway, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have been able to do this. So I'm excited. Love you, John Gray. You too, Michael Snow. All right, guys, gals, and children, everybody out there in YouTubeville, please be kind in your neighborhood. Be kind in your families. Try to find somebody who you don't know, who you think could use a little bit of kindness, and just pour a little bit of that out for them. Would you please? and leave some kindness in the comments for me. I'd love to hear from you. I hope to see y'all again here shortly. I don't know what the next video is gonna be. I've got a driveway maintenance video coming up. I, I'm either gonna put that out before this video or it'll come out after this video, I'm not exactly sure. Again, thank you so much. Leave a comment, give me a like. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Over and out.